In this video, I'm going to show you how you use a program called Postman to set up your Zapier webhooks. What Postman is going to allow you to do is to feed information to your Zapier webhook to basically make a request and then you can set up the rest of your Zap. The situations that you might use something like this is let's say you are trying to receive information from another software using a webhook and they haven't sent you any information yet. So obviously you can't go set up the rest of your Zap. What you can do is you can use something like Postman to send the exact same fields that that other app would be sending to your Zap and then you can still go set up the rest of your Zaps. Or for example, if you are sending information from your own software or a program of your own and you know exactly what fields are gonna be sent, then again, you can use Postman to kickstart your Zap and then you can actually set up the rest of it. So Postman is a great, great tool, postman.com, and they have a online version and they also have a version you can download. So I do have the downloaded version on my Windows system, but the online version works just as well. They do have pricing paid versions, but the free version is perfectly fine. That's what I use for everything. And just to give you a bit of an overview of what it does is, if you know anything about HTTP requests, so this is how essentially the whole internet communicates is with HTTP requests. So get requests, post requests, delete requests, put requests, all these different methods to do stuff on the internet basically. And you send information or you ask for information. And Postman allows you to essentially do that to create these requests with a nice user interface. So if you open up Postman here, you can see Right off the bat, you can choose what type of request you wanna make, get request, post, put, patch, delete, etc. In most cases, unless you're doing something really interesting, you're almost only gonna ever use get, post, maybe delete for most APIs, or even Zapier webhooks. If we wanted to send a get request to this Zap that we have set up, so obviously we have our Zapier webhook, we get the, the link that they give us, and we wanted to send information to this, we could make a request just like this, a simple get request, but we didn't send it anything, so nothing's gonna show up here. We're gonna say test trigger, but it won't give us any data fields. It's just like the information that's included, so there's nothing there. But now if we are looking at the parameters section, because when it comes to get requests, you don't have a, a body of information you're sending. You're just passing all of the relevant information in the URL, in this link here. And we call these query strings or parameters. So that's what parameters is in Postman. So if I wanted to include a name here, include my own name, because I'm special, then you can see it says request, means success. If I load more, now it's gonna show up. And I have Gavin there as an option to use in the future steps. Now let's say I wanna send information like another app would actually send. So webhooks, if they're sending you information, to your Zapier webhook, they're usually going to be sending a post request. So with post requests, you could still have these parameters here, these query strings, but a post request is almost always going to have some type of body of data that they're sending. And usually that's in the form of JSON data. So you can see here in Postman, I swapped that to post because now I want to send a body of information. I want to create something on their side. And I go to the body over there. I choose raw. I just set that as JSON. And then if you know JSON, this isn't a JSON tutorial. So we can send the same information, but now as the body. And I'm actually going to include both the parameter and the body. So you can see that shows up in a different way. So there you can see everything that was in the query string, so the query parameters, which are these things after the question mark, those are gonna show up in Zapier in the query string and get grouped that way. But everything else that comes in the, the JSON body from our post request, they're gonna show up like this. If you think now, as I was saying earlier, if you have, say, set up a webhook with Shopify or some CRM, and for some reason, they haven't sent you any sample data. So they haven't sent you any data that you can actually set up a sample with, which is kind of annoying because you obviously need to fetch the information to be able to set up the rest of the zap. 
what you can do is if you know what field they're going to send you, you can mimic this with Postman. So if I knew that this given app was going to send me name and let's say country, South Africa, and let's say they were sending, I don't know, source where, wherever I came from. Let's say I came from Facebook. Uh, maybe this is a lead gen app or something or CRM. So if I send that now, again, updated in this post request again. Now we have all these fields in our Zap that we can build the rest of the Zap off. And then obviously I can go do everything that I would need to do in the rest of the Zap, et cetera, et cetera. I can set up filters. I can do the rest of the steps. This video was a quick one. It was just introducing to Postman, which is a great tool to use with Zapier if you're working with webhooks, because what Postman allows you to do, as I said, is it allows you to build these internet requests, these HTTP requests that you would need to use on the internet. And it gives you a nice visual interface to do that. So you can get the get requests, post requests, etc., And you can send information to your Zapier webhooks. You can fetch information from other APIs. I just use this in the situation of a Zapier webhook, but you could use this for any APIs. And it's just a really great tool to get acquainted with if you are going to start getting more involved with automation work and also with APIs. It's a great way to quickly test APIs.